Hello, I'm Tom Slater, Director of Americana Auctions at Heritage Auction Galleries. Welcome to the video preview for our November 17th Space Exploration Auction to be held in the first floor auction gallery of our Dallas, Texas headquarters. This is the seventh in a series of twice yearly auctions, featuring a fabulous selection of the best in manned spaceflight related memorabilia. Once again, Heritage offers wonderful and historical lots directly from the collections of America's space heroes or from their family members, including Vance Brand, Roger Chaffee, uh, Michael Collins, Edgar Mitchell, Ed White II, and John Young. We've often made the analogy that all the potentially available material that ever flew on the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo missions would fit in a large suitcase. That proverbial suitcase is beyond any doubt emptying rapidly. Now is the time to purchase new to the market material from the collections of the astronauts and NASA insiders. Let's take a look at just a few of the interesting lots offered in this important auction. Uh, Project Mercury was the first program of manned American space travel. It featured seven astronauts chosen by NASA in April 1959. These seven brave explorers are represented in our first featured lot. Lot 41004 consists of seven individually signed photos directly from the collection of Apollo 1 astronaut Roger Chafee. Each member of the, of the elite Mercury 7 group of astronauts signed a color NASA photo welcoming him to the team of NASA astronauts in 1963. These photos have remained in the possession of his widow since Chafee's tragic death during a launching pad training accident in 1967. Other photos from Chafee's collection are included in this auction. Lot 41007 is a Mercury dime that flew on the second Mercury flight and was recovered from the Atlantic Ocean 38 years later. This circulated 1936 Winged Liberty 10 cent piece was carried into space on the Liberty Bell 7 Mercury spacecraft during Gus Grissom's Mercury Redstone mission, 4, on July 21, 1962. It was lost at sea and recovered along with Liberty Bell 7 on July 20, 1999. To the best of our knowledge, only 12 of these are known in private hands and their existence has been confirmed by NASA. This is a rare and desirable space-flown numismatic item. Project Gemini was the second series of manned U.S. space flights. The first American two-man mission was Gemini 3 with Gus Grissom and John Young aboard. This next featured lot is from that historic flight. Lot 41009 contains five first-generation NASA color slides of photos taken aboard Gemini 3. The object of this three-orbit mission was to test the maneuverability of the new Gemini spacecraft, not to take pictures. They did manage to find time to shoot 25 images, primarily of cloud formations. Five of these landmark images are offered here directly from the collection of mission pilot John Young. We have other lots from Captain Young's own collection in this auction as well. Lot 41010 is a stunning painting by the Dean of American Space Artists, Robert McCall. It is so gorgeous that we used it for our cover, front and back. It depicts astronaut Ed White while on his landmark self-propelled spacewalk during Gemini 4 in 1965. Included with it are 10 tiny mustard seeds that White carried in his space suit pocket during the EVA as a symbol of his religious faith. Robert McCall, who just passed away earlier this year, documented the American space program from the very beginning with his unique artwork. He was the designer of nearly two dozen U.S. stamps, not to mention the mission insignia for Apollo 17, and the advertising artwork for Stanley Kubrick's legendary film, 2001, A Space Odyssey. His original paintings such as this one are seldom offered. Other less elaborate pieces of McCall's original art can be found in lots 41197 and 198. Lot 41023. Wally Schirra was the only astronaut to fly in all of the first three American space programs. His second flight was on Gemini 6A, and we are offering his own signed personal copy of the NASA mission report for that flight. What makes it particularly interesting is that he made numerous notes and comments throughout the book, some in apparent disagreement with the information he found there. Comments such as, what, no, wrong, oh, nuts, and help can all be found in this report. It is rare to be able to view such inside and personal data, especially in a NASA document that was originally considered confidential. The Apollo program was the pinnacle of manned space travel. This auction has an impressive collection of flown and signed material from these flights. 
as well as a number of rarely seen hardware and spacesuit components. Lots 41, 033, 034, and 035 feature three rarely offered training used components of the famous Apollo A7L extravehicular mobility unit, more commonly known as a spacesuit. We have a thermal micrometeoroid garment and a glove used in training by Apollo 15 lunar module pilot Jim Irwin and a lunar boot from that Apollo 17 commander, Gene Cernan, used in preparation for his mission. This is a similar boot to the ones worn on the lunar surface by the 12 moonwalkers that left the distinctive footprint seen in so many of the photos taken there. Lot 41069 is one of the precious few personal items taken on Apollo 11, man's first lunar landing mission a flown crew signed cover or envelope that actually went through the post-flight quarantine period with the astronauts. Stamped on this cover is the message, delayed in quarantine at Lunar Receiving Laboratory, MSC Houston, Texas. This rare relic is directly from command module pilot Michael Collins' own personal collection and he has written at the top, carried to the moon aboard Apollo 11. Lot 41105 is an interesting souvenir of the second manned lunar landing mission, a gold-colored tie pin made by Grumman who manufactured the lunar module that actually flew to the surface of the moon on lunar module Intrepid. This 17-millimeter pin spent more than 31 hours on the moon and is one of 25 that were given to the Apollo 12 crew for dispersal out of 50 that were flown. This particular one originally came from the collection of command module pilot Richard Gordon. The front has an enameled U.S. flag over the cratered lunar surface, and the back has the words, flown to the moon by an intrepid crew Apollo 12, November 1969, above a Navy pilot's insignia. This was an all-Navy crew. Lots 41124 through 41134 are all from the personal collection of Dr. Edgar Mitchell, lunar module pilot on Apollo 14, the third lunar landing mission. These are flags that were carried aboard the command module Kitty Hawk, when it traveled to the moon and back between January 31st and February 9th, 1971. Lot 41124 is an American flag of the scarce larger 11 by 8 inch size. It is signed and certified directly on the flag itself, flown to the moon aboard Apollo 14 at Gear Mitchell. The rest of the flags are of the regular 6 by 4 inch size and include flags from the United States, California, Iowa, Massachusetts, New York, Pennsylvania, Texas, Brazil, Germany, and Japan. These are very popular with collectors, and they all come with letters of authenticity signed by Dr. Mitchell. Lots 41207 through 41213 represent a bit of a departure from our typical offerings, a selection of seven meteorites. Two of these are actually pieces of the moon itself. Many space collectors own man-made items that flew to the moon and back, but very few can claim to own anything lunar in origin other than a smudge of lunar dust on a space-flown relic. Offered here are two rare samples, like this one, of an authenticated lunar specimen found on Earth as a result of an impact event on the Moon eons ago. We also have five other samples from the far reaches of outer space, such as this one. What a great addition to any space display these would make. We do want to mention that all of our autographed items have been viewed and passed as authentic by the leading expert in the space autograph field, Scott Cornish. All Soviet autographs are also examined by Dr. David Sauber. Any auto pen or secretarial signature accompanying items with other authentic signatures will be stated as such in the description. This gives our bidders the extra level of confidence that they have come to expect from Heritage. We hope that you will enjoy looking through our catalog and hopefully find something just perfect for your collection. Good luck in your bidding.